The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the new media factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second episode of Fever Pitch. My name is Rick Olivares, and I'm with my partner... Jonah. Forgot my name? <laughs> no, I didn't forget name? your name. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's Jonah. Here another week. Glad to be here. Are you going to introduce our, who we have yeah, our on beautiful our right guest. Here? Yeah, yes. It was supposed to be Nate Berkey joining us here today, but we're glad. We got someone better. Yeah, we got someone even better who looks a whole lot better than Nate Berkey. A None lot other better than looking. Marielle Benitez. Marielle. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone watching. Right. Jonah, you want to tell them what's in store for them today on Fever Pitch? Uh, we don't really have a plan here of what's in store, <laughs> but uh, we do got a lot going on. Uh, we'll be talking about women's football today. We'll be uh, talking about how the first round of the UFL ended, as long also with um, talk about the youth UFL that's going on that I'm mm -hmm. sure no one's really heard about that kicks off this weekend. Um, but our main focus today, just to show you guys that we're not sexist and we're not all about the <laughs> UFL, is going to be women's football. We're going to talk a lot about women's football today, and hopefully we get that to grow as well as our, our, the UFL yeah. and the men's football as fast as that's going. We not only love women, but we love women's football, right, Jonah? Yeah, definitely, definitely love women's football, women's right. soccer legs. Right, right. But first, I think you have to share with our viewers out there your top five. You got My a top, top five, right? Five. I got a top five this week. I was tweeting and I was asking people what they wanted to see, but uh, I got no replies. It's kind of <laughs> Please sad. reply, people. Yeah, please reply. You guys make it tough for me. So this week, I went with top five boots. Top five boots that are being worn around. So here's number five. These are the CTR 360s. Um, I'm sure you see many players in the UFL, many players around the world wearing these. Um, they got this this nice yellow, and then they got like a mustard yellow color going on now as well. Um, Do you wear that, Jonah? No, I, I cannot wear anything but Mizuno. Don't try to get okay. me in trouble. Okay. Don't get me in trouble here. <laughs> these are just top five boots being worn. So, And here's one of our players, Iniesta. I'm not sure. Have you heard of this about this guy, Iniesta? I you think you might have heard about him, you know. He's a pretty good player. He's yeah. decent. Decent player. Uh, right. Only plays for one of the best clubs in the world. No, no worries. Best player. National team in the world also, I would say. Right. Don't take offense to that, anyone. Uh, so he, he's one to be wearing the boots. You'll see them on his feet a lot as he uh, dribbles by you. And then our number four boot for the week is nice. the, va the Vapors. Nice. Um, these are very pink. and uh, So that looks good on Stallion, looks right? Looks good on, yeah. There's a lot of guys in the UFL wearing them. Um, normally you see those guys with the quick skinny little feet um like our guest chiefy last week uh -huh, he's actually yeah. wearing these boots now since uh he decided to leave mizuno i'm not gonna hold that against him but <laughs> he's he's now wearing these nike boots um you see the pretty boy uh cristiano ronaldo of course he's wearing these yeah we got some wow. fist pumping over here in the background uh he definitely wears these with his quick feet um he's i, I would say he's probably the most known player for wearing these boots right now. For a while, it was going to be Balot Doctora. Obviously uh, not. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so with our number three, we've got the Messi F50. Nice. So you guys nice. know about this guy, Messi? Have you, you heard about him, Mariel? You heard about him a little bit? <laughs> uh, legally a midget, now a superstar. That's what I like to call him. He was legally a midget when he grew up, but now he's a superstar. Nice. Um, these are his boots. Our, actually, our Messi of the Philippines, OJ Porteria, is also wearing these boots. Don't know if, uh, they, wow. if these two talk or not. I'm sure if they, if they made a plan for that. But he's also wearing these boots. Um, we have Phil Young Husband. Also, now that he's with Adidas, is wearing these. Yeah. Um, I've never tried them on, nor do I want to. Uh, <laughs> but I hear, I hear they're nice and comfortable boots. <laughs> so our number, well, that was three, we're on to two. So our number two are, these are the Puma, the Puma Cats. Nice. The reason I chose Puma as a number two boot is uh, I actually wanted to choose Puma in general, now that Puma is the new uh, Ask Call sponsor. Right. Um, and, you know, I just, Kaya just had a game against 
Global, uh, Kyle won, if you didn't know. Um, but <laughs> that all was a the shameless plug. All the <laughs> sorry out there, but all the ass calls are now all wearing Puma. So uh, I've noticed that around the UFL league, you see a lot of Puma boots now, mm-hmm. and. Uh, one of the main guys who's, who's I've actually noticed wearing Puma all the time is uh, Carly DeMurga, um, who we just beat last week on Global. <laughs> but uh, he's always wearing Puma. That so, was a there, so here's Carly in his Puma boots. <laughs> and which brings me to the number one boot. I'm and I'm not even this. kidding, but I really think this is the number one boot being worn, maybe not all, all over the world, but definitely in the UFL. In the UFL, the Neos. The Mizuno Neos are definitely being worn by all all the players in the UFL. Not just saying that because because I'm with Mizuno, but that dude, man, that is the Hulk. This is, it the, is Hulk. the Hulk. Yeah, that's the Hulk from Brazil. Yeah, he Play for is Porto. Yeah, plays for Porto. Yep, he is also with Mizuno along with uh, me and my girl right here. <laughs> we're both with Mizuno, but right. not just because we're with Mizuno. I seriously think this is the boot that most players in the UFL are wearing right now. Um, I would say I would say every starting lineup has about two players wearing the Neos. Super comfortable, light boot. Um, I can't, all I gotta say is I love them. I really, I really do love these boots. They got them in black, they have them in white, and I actually just have a teammate who came from Australia who somehow found purple ones. I was so jealous. They're not here in the Philippines yet, but definitely gotta get a pair of those purple ones that he has. Uh, what do you think about the Neo boots? I've actually not tried the Neo boots. Oh. They're the Wave Ignite though. Oh, oh those, are, those are good too. They're Mizuno as well. Yeah, but I hear that these are super light and super comfortable. Super comfortable boots. So that is my top five for this week, which are my boots, the boots. <laughs> hey, guys, you guys would help me out a lot if you just tweeted me back. Come on. <laughs> I got people retweeting it. Come on, you guys can tweet back. Just give me a little top five there, a little action. Okay, now that we've heard about uh, from Jonah for his top five of the week, we're going to jump right into UFL and football news. First off, we've got the UFL Youth League kicking off this weekend. Jonah, Marielle, maybe you might want to tell our viewers you, out there what's in store. Any, any no, no, I'm not coaching. You're All not right. coaching. No. So are yeah, you coaching? Yeah, I'm coaching our U15 Kaya Elite Um I play for Kaya, so of course I coach Kaya. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, so there's this new UFL league, which is um, I think it's super cool for the for the youth, for the kids. Um, it goes, I, th- I think it goes from U6 all the way to U19. Um, basically, every club um, is not mandatory, but mostly every club has a an academy, a, a development uh, program. It's basically just the way it's done in Europe or mm-hmm. all over the world. You know, Barcelona's got younger kids that they're preparing to bring up to the, the first team. Um, some kids start playing in the first team as uh, young as 16 or 17 years old. So we're basically trying to go in that same direction. Um, this weekend, uh, all the clubs, basically everyone will have their first game of the season. Um, it's a little short notice. All clubs, Some clubs have been training maybe all year. Like I know Green Archers, I've, I've haven't scouted them yet, but I'll be scouting them for my age. Um, I heard uh, they play together all year round. Uh, my team, for example, has only come together two weeks ago. Um, we've only had four training sessions. Now we're going into our first match on Saturday. Jonah, how many teams are going to be competing, at least in your division? I th- in my division, I heard there's going to be eight to ten teams. Eight to ten teams. That's a lot. So, that, yeah, that's, like, that's a season for the kids. Um, before, the way it would work was... Um, you would set up friendlies on the weekend. Right. Now right. these kids are going to have an actual schedule, an actual season schedule, and they'll know when to play against each other, which is cool for the kids too because just like us players in the UFL, we're all buddies outside of our teams. We all talk to each other. These kids all go to school with each other, but they play for different clubs. So it's kind of it's a little, it makes it a little competitive for the kids. Right. Um, the fact that these kids come out and they watch the UFL, you know, the pro teams play, and now they get to play – for the younger, the younger team, and still be able to wear the same jersey, the same number, maybe as one of your favorite players right. on the team. So I think it's a great feeling for the kids. I think it's going to be a great thing for football here in, in the Philippines. Um, I think it'll help out to feed into the national program, to mm-hmm. the national team. Um, you'll find talent, you know, 
all over all over the country. Definitely. Marielle, what's your take on that one? I mean, yeah, like what he said, I think it's a good exposure for the kids. I know the Green Archers had tryouts and they were really setting up um, for the for the younger boys. And it's something that these kids would be able to look up to the older guys and um, play for the club of their, their role models. And hopefully this will be a good grassroots program for, for the national team. Good answer. So later we're going to be talking about women's football when we talk about uh, what Marielle does. No? But right now let's re- qu- quickly go through to a couple of games. Probably let's jump off to the one last night that's between Army and Loyola. A 10-1 thrashing. <laughs> What does that do? I mean, what does that do for the military teams? They've been taking on the chin. Marielle, you've been watching the UFL. What do you think of what's what's been happening? I mean, it's probably frustrating. Back then, you know, the 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 armed forces were the teams to beat, and now it's it's just discouraging for the for the players or even for the the audience to be seeing the the army or the air force to be thrashed that way. So I hope they start picking up and be able to cope with the competitiveness of um, the different clubs that is currently playing now in the UFL. Jonah, how about you? Do you think these blowouts are good for TV? Um, yeah, if you like to see goals. <laughs> uh, if, you like to, if you like to see goals, I think it's great for TV. Um, but I, it's kind of like touched, uh, I don't know if it's touched me, but I feel it's uh, bad for the armed forces teams. Um, I know these guys, you know, I can't even see if they're, if they, if they so much care anymore. Um, right. the, both Army and Air Force are at the bottom of the table. Um, I think the only points that they've picked up are against, against each other. Against each other, yeah. Um, so to see games... T- uh, 10, 10 one like last night, where I felt that for a while Army was in the game for a little bit, like for you know, and then they get scored on. I, I think they like mentally broke down, uh, arguing with each other. Um, I I really don't think that the blowouts are good for your, for the the league because it just shows that you know there's the top teams and then the bottom there's a team. Disparity. There's, there's way too much of a drop in, right. the, in the football. It, it's not being very much competitive and then as a player sometimes when playing against an armed force team you kind of already know what to expect you know it's going to be a, a tough game they're going to be in it for a while they're going to be hanging in there with you and, and then it'll get really physical where they try to get into your brain into your head but sometimes i feel like they're getting into their own heads mm-hmm. um and that's where their level of play goes down I, I think there's they have good players i think they have good local base players would they think the guys have talent i just think that um you know, after a while, maybe they just they just lose it. They they lose focus or something they could work on. Um, at the same time, I, I would not like to see either team disappear. Um, I think if maybe if both teams went down to second division, it would give them a year to rebuild, reset goals. Um, and I I think they'll they'll be right back in the in division one. I don't know if they'll be going up and down, um, but I mean I have a lot of respect for those teams for what they do, what they do off the field. Um, and still being able to come out and play on the field. Right. With that win by Loyola, it puts them right back in the race. But another huge game in the past few days was between Kaya and Global. Marielle, your thoughts about that game. Have you ever seen Global no, get I, nicked after leading by 2-0? No, I think that was the first time. And, I mean, it's interesting. You know, Global has been in the top, you know, one of the top teams. And for to, for you to see them break that way against Kaya, um, it just puts, you know, the, the competition um, at a very interesting pace, knowing that anyone can be beaten, that the ball is round. And for you to really be on top is that you have to keep focus and keep um, your A game every every game. So there you have it. It's going to be very interesting to follow the UFL. We invite all of you out there to come to the Emperador Stadium every Tuesday, Thursday, as well as on Saturday. We're going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Marielle about the Maldita. So keep it right here at Fever Pitch. What you've been missing on the factory. Were you the one who posted, James, regarding uh, the guidelines when it comes to checkpoints? Yes, I That's was. That's fantastic. Yes, I just made it up, but you know, I thought it was. <laughs> 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 I mean, this time of year, right? Election time. Uh, you know, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story, okay? <laughs> Children do not follow this at home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just so you know your rights, if you do get stopped by a checkpoint, you are not we're able to, to verify all of these, James. You're not allowed to run over them. That didn't make it here. So technically... <laughs> now, number two. 
Upon approach, uh, slow down. I guess that counts as not running them over. <laughs> <laughs> Dim headlights and slow turn down. on cabin lights. Okay. Cabin lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lock all doors of vehicles during inspection. Since lock? Oh, lock. They might get uh, pissed off because nope. you're locking But that's doors. the thing. Okay. This is where they get you. And this is actually, I know we're making fun of it a little bit, but yeah. it's a serious issue. We've seen some people genuinely harass. Drugs are planted yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and other things, stories. you know. Um, <clears throat> a Justin Bieber CD is planted, which is even worse. Oh, yes, no. I've heard of that, you know. And there's no defense for that. It's just there's Bieber really no defense. The, yeah, it's like, it's but Your Honor, we found this. I <laughs> throw, throw the book at him. The then CD as well. You, to, you know, then after that, you have to submit your cell phone and everything. Yeah. And ne next thing you know, you know, you have a Justin Bieber ringtone. <laughs> Catch James Where Deacon and the boys on Counterflow Wednesdays, 7.30 to 8.30, only here on The Factory. All right, we're back here at Fever Pitch. And before we move along with our program, talking about the Malditas and women's football, Jonah here is going to tell us about, or keep us up to date on what's up in the UFL in terms of the standings. Yeah, okay, so the first round has now ended. Um, the first round actually, the second round actually just kicked off uh, last night. Last night, last night. Last night. Yeah. Um, so basically every team is going to have the same schedule as you did the first round. You're gonna base, you're gonna, they're going to play every opponent in the same order. Um, again, this league you play everybody twice. At the end of the league, most points, you know, uh, gets the title. So right now, the first round, second round kicked off again last night. We have in first place, Global. And second, Stallion. Third, Loyola. Fourth, Kaya. Fifth, we got Pachanga. Kaya That's and Pachanga, a we plug, are we're actually tied for fourth with Pachanga. Kaya is, um, but we're ahead on goal differential. That might be a surprise <laughs> that we're ahead on goal. Yep, we scored a lot of goals this season. Um, so then we would say six is PSG. Then followed by Nomads, Green Archers, Army, and Air Force. So that is going into the second round. Um, at the top, the Global has a goal in hand since they kicked off last night, their second round. So they have 10 games played with 25 points. Stallions have nine games played with 24 points. Loyola, 10 games played with 23 points. Kaya, nine games played with 15. Tied with Pachanga as well, nine games played with 15 points. So that, that's the top five. So as you can see, in the running, the second round, it. It's anyone's game. Anyone can slip up, and anyone can collect points, steal points from someone else. So this league has become very more competitive. Um, you don't want to miss the games. The games are in intense, crazy games. Uh, you never know who will come out on top, what football each team is going to play, and how they're going to play against each other. So it's it's the second round is, is a round to watch for sure. Right. We're going to segue into this. Marielle, how, which would you prefer, a cup format or a league format? Well, um, I think a league format would be nice mm -hmm. because then you, um, all the teams would always have to play their best um, every game and that the goals will always count. Right. So it would be interesting. Although, of course, when you get to the end, it's more exciting when um, two teams will really actually play for a championship and that not one team will stand out and will just play their final. Their Having final. said that, we're going to jump right now into women's football. Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jonah's not playing any women's league. But I could. They'll give me a wig. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to be talking about women's football right here. As you all know, Marielle is the captain of the Malditas, the women's national team. And if you team. didn't know, now you do. Now, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, Jonah? Okay. So we're going to get into women's football here. First of all, we want to know a little history about the Malditas. Could you give us a little history? When did you guys start? How long you've been on the team? Okay, well, the, the women's national team has always been there, um, way back um, even when I started playing football. But I got into the team when I was in college, so um, I think I've been on the team almost 10 years. Wow. That's right. And, um, almost as long as Phil, Chiefy, all that's these right, guys, That's right, that's right. So, she brings experience. Uh, <laughs> so right now, I'm the most senior. And I think I've been fortunate enough to be part of the team when, um, when the girls I used to play with were the seniors who are coaching now. 
And now I'm in that transition period where the Philippines is experiencing, you know, the rebirth of football. And it's interesting that the the Malditas is also getting, you know, the the support, um, not as much as the Ascals, but that there's more interest for for girls' football. Marielle, when you talk about rebirth, there was a time when the national team would get killed by a lot of goals. And yes. did, you, did you actually play in any of those matches where like the other teams would beat up on us? Um, yes, I actually, I think it would be my first tournament. We played against Japan. Wow. And it was my first time to experience um, getting beat 15-0. Oh. Um, yeah, so back then, you know, I was just starting out with the women's team. And I was actually tasked to man Mark Omare Sawa. Who, who actually they just won the, the recent Women's World Cup. Right, so right. Um, I think that was my first experience where they would attack and, you know, you can't react and they'd actually score a goal right away. So that was pretty much 90 minutes of defending. Um, but right now, I think in their last two um, Asian uh, tournaments, we've pretty much done so much better that we actually are starting to attack and score goals as compared to women's football in the past where um, we would actually just hold back and um, wait for them to attack and then bank on our counterattacks. You talked about being on a team for 10 years. What yes. made you decide to keep going on? I mean, there were all these beat downs before. I mean, it's a good thing you didn't lose, you know, you didn't lose faith, you, know, you didn't lose interest in playing football. What made you keep on going? Well, I think it's always been my, my love for the game. Um, I've been fortunate that um, the coaches that I've been with have been supportive, even the teammates. So there was a time when they disbanded the team. I actually started as one of the younger ones. We didn't have the youth team yet. So as soon as you get into the national team, whether you're 16 or um, 15 or 19, you're all playing for the women's, women's team. So. Unlike today that you have the under 14, under 16, under 19. So if, you, um, if you're asked to join the team, you instantly play for the seniors team. So even if you're 16, you're playing with girls who are 30, 25. So I think that's when I started. And um, there was a time we were disbanded and you get frustrated. Um, but recently, you know, uh, I think Coach Ernie Neras was successful in bringing us seniors. At the time when the team was disbanded, we had seniors um, playing. So he waited for that group to graduate. And so when we regrouped, we became the seniors. Right. So. <laughs> Johnny, you got a question for, I so, think, about the name? Oh, yeah, the name. <laughs> well, the Malditas. Who came up with this name? And uh, as you know, you know, a lot of people, maybe they don't... Um, Agree, agree, agree yes. with the name. Yes. Um, I'm one of them. Do, <laughs> one of them. do you? Uh, but I support them. <laughs> um, I just support him too, actually. Like, I just do also. <laughs> just the names. The name. Tell us about the name. How do you feel about the name? Um, how do other players feel about the name? And who came up how, with that name? How do your parents feel about the name? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. The the name came about in 2005. Um, for the Southeast Asian Games in the Philippines. So that's a time where all the national teams actually had a moniker. So the Ascals were named the Ascals, and then the, the women's team was named Malditas, given by our managers at the time. So um, Kathy Revilla and Ernie Nieras back then. Um, oh, you've been outed. <laughs> so well, you on the spot, yeah, you on the spot right. So there. they were managers then, and I know Coach Ernie was saying that the name came about because of the bunch of girls of that 2005 Sea Games. Um, he said that those girls were malditas. They were, they were um, naughty girls. <laughs> so yeah, so malditas they say is really bad um, in Spanish, but we'd like to see the good in it. Um, we think that it's um, being malditas on and off the pitch means um, being feisty, girls who are palaban. So it's the type that we are the girls who won't back down from any challenge. Um, we play against boys, and we're not afraid of playing against guys. So I actually played against her in the Adobo Cup, and she was just really manhandling <laughs> everyone. I protest. She was, she was being MLD. To the organizers of Adobo Cup, you should not allow Marielle Benitez to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Jonah, more questions for you. So my next question is, now you said you've been on the national team about 10, 10 years, years now. I'm sure you have good moments. I'm sure you have great moments, and I'm sure there's terrible moments. <laughs> can 
you know, she said herself, they got to beat 15-0 at times. That, that can't be a great moment, you know, yeah. good, maybe a good experience. Don't worry about it. I got to beat Australia 9-0. <laughs> so there's, there's always those days. Yeah. So I was, could you give us one of those, a uh, moment for each? Um, okay. Well, you, so that, what is like your, your best memory till today? Your best moment so far? The best would probably be um, just the recent one um, in the LA Vikings Cup. I think that's the first time that the women's team won an international competition. Um, we were invited last year to play in a in a club in an invitational, and um, it was the first time for us to be exposed in the level in the U.S. And it, we were given two weeks. We had one week of training camp and tryouts and then played the following week and came out as champions. So I think that's, that's one um, great moment because it has opened the doors for, for women's football and for the Phil Americans or the Filipino girls in the U.S. to actually want to represent the Philippines in the national team. Okay, so that would be your best moment till today. <laughs> what is a, a good moment? <laughs> You know, when you were just like, oh, that's that's cool. You know. Well, it's always a good moment to be playing for the Philippines. Great um, answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you always, I always take pride in that. Um, I think we were one of the good moments was probably being able to hold uh, South Korea to a four nil. Although we lost, but we knew that we played really well. It was under Coach Han Smith, and um, the goals that they scored were actually controversial in the sense that um, they were two penalty kicks and a free kick by the, by the box. But being able to play against a team that has um, Olympic experience and being able to um, be with a team that just got together maybe like six, eight months before the tournament. So that was a good achievement for us. Mariel, as I understand, it's not just international football for you. I yes. hear that there's a local league being planned. What's up with that one? Well, there are plans for the Super League. Um, I've, heard about it, I've heard a little about about it. Yeah, I've heard um, Global already has a, a yes, team. Yes, so oh. there were talks of the Super League that has been approved by FIFA for um, them giving support to women's football in the Philippines. And just when we had all those talks and meetings, all these other clubs started putting up their women's teams. So Global has a team, um, Green Archers has a team, and... Um, I think Chelsea Soccer School also has a women's team, and they're already playing in a weekend football league against each other. And it's good because then the girls get exposure. Um, I think that's what we're lacking here, um, getting games throughout the year, um, getting that interest for girls to, to play football. When is this expected to kick off? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I know it. the women's committee is just trying to find the right timing to kick it off maybe um, after the the qualifiers or maybe early next year. What team do you plan to play for? I actually play for Green Archers United. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, I've played with them in one league, but I, I don't know yet the plans for, for the Super League because I know that there were plans on having the national team um, being drafted um, to be spread out among the, the, the clubs. So... Earlier you said that uh, women's football does not get the interest or the attention of the mainstream media. How does it feel like, as you said, you're playing second fiddle, maybe even third fiddle to the, 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 uh, the media attention yes. in terms of the Ascals? Is it tough sometimes playing when there are very few people in the stands or it, you hardly see it in papers or, in the, or, or, or on the internet? Well, um... Yes, of course, when you see the support for the Ascals, it can be frustrating at times. But I think um, it's been good for us as well because, you know, we've had people who've been supporting the team um, ever since, way back even when football wasn't really being promoted in the, the papers. And you feel that they're still there um, supporting you and there are a few others who are coming out to support the Malditas. Um, I think it's, we just need a, a ven or an event or a competition for it to for the Malditas to be highlighted and for, for the Filipino audience to see and to support. Um, during our tournament in the U.S., we've also been able to promote it with you know, um, a few channels, a few networks, um, also getting news, but it's not as big. And we feel that maybe in time, it will also, it will also come. Um, we did a Mizuno event um, about two weeks ago yes. together. Um, 
and you were telling me about now here in the Philippines, there's only about five five players uh, based here right now on the national team. Is eight, that yeah. Eight, eight, eight players. So that, that's a difference. <laughs> eight and five. That's a difference there. In the so, past two weeks, we increased. So <laughs> obviously that means that um, there's more players. Uh, based over, abroad, yes. Based over, yeah. So how, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Have you seen some, uh, possibly some of like uh, your formal teammates get left behind because they found other players elsewhere. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Because the same thing's going on with uh, the yes, Ascals. Yes. yes. Well, have- back then, um, when the team, when the core was based in the Philippines and we'd have a few just Phil, um, Phil Americans or uh, Filipinos based abroad who would come in, it was difficult for us to adjust because they'd come in maybe two weeks, um, a week before the tournament. And it was difficult because of the, the the teamwork and things like that. But last year, we realized um, we were only four girls from the Philippines who played in the U.S. with the Phil, Phil Americans there. And it seemed like the level of play that they had there was pretty high, that it was easy for us to adjust. So right now... Um, I think it's good for us to be exposed to that kind of, of level. Of course, um, it will be difficult for the other girls from here who aren't exposed to that that level of competitiveness maybe in the UAAP because, I mean, I think personally, the characteristic of the girls who were raised um, in the U.S. are more aggressive than the girls who were raised here. So um, I think for women's football to progress, it is, um, it's good for us to have these girls come here um, uh, share their experience and also increase the level of play here in the Philippines. So who's the Phil Young husband of the wim- of women's football right now in terms of scoring? In terms of scoring, um, I don't think there's one girl who would actually stand out. Um, in their past tournaments, it has always been a team effort. Um, oh, you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I don't think there's like one player who would be, you know... Um, someone who would really stand out with a lot of goals. You play in a lot of foreign tournaments. Uh, yes. Are you ably supported by the PFF or is it Sariling Seacup? Does it come from your own pockets and your parents and all that? Um, no, I th- our managers, uh, they're the ones who support. The PFF also support us. So um, we... We also have a few, you know, sponsors. So, hindi naman sariling sikap. But does it allow you to all have day jobs or are you able to focus on football? At, at, at least for your team, not just for yourself. Uh, well, yes, we would need to have day jobs. So, I don't think we're at that point where women's football would, or playing football would be able to support your daily needs. So, um, I'm fortunate because my day job allows me to have a flexible schedule. So I get to play um, and train in the morning and then go to work and then even do other like extracurricular stuff. John, what's your day job anyway? Do you know? <laughs> my day job? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> your day job, Mario. I work as an athletic director for a university, for Philippine Women's University. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, that's and cool. Then, yeah. yeah, and then I'm a performing artist for the Bayanihan. So. Are you going to dance for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not prepared. Maybe next time. Next time. <laughs> there you have it. She's going to dance on Fever Pitch in a future episode. Yes. But, okay, back to women's football. Um, you played in the UAP. Um, has the level gone up? Have you, be, you, you've, you cover it also for ABS-CBN. Yes, yes. From the time that you were playing, has the level gone up? I think so. Um, the The girls now are are more exposed to football. Uh, You see a lot of girls who are very skillful as compared to the way it was played in the past where you'd have a lot of girls just kicking long balls and everyone else running after it. So now you see that there's a system, there are plays wherein girls can come out and head balls and, you know. um, So I think that the girls now are are, are good. They just need more games to be exposed and um, we hopefully that we're able to bring them to come and play for the national team. So, wow, that's a lot of women's information there. <laughs> uh, what, what would you like to see happen? If, if you could have it your way, what would you like to see happen with women's football in this country? Well, first we'd want to have the, the league. 
I think it would be good for for the national team players to have a, a regular um, competition, to have the college players to look forward to something after college, and for the younger girls to look up to people, um, to role models that will allow them to get into the sport and, and play football. Wow, a league of their own. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Sounds like angels in the outfield. <laughs> You know, um, the football has also helped you uh, in your broadcasting yes, career. Of course, it's been of good course. for you. Yes. Uh, how, how did you ever think that you'd be doing this when you were a kid? That you'd be covering Askel's games? You'd Not be at all. Playing in the U.S. <laughs> Hugo, girl. <laughs> how big a thrill is it for you? Um, of course, I've always, you know, I've always, I would always say that I'm athletic, but um, I've tried all kinds of sports, and it was in football that I really fell in love with, and. It never crossed my mind that um, 10, 15 years from the time I started playing that I would be able to keep playing after after high school or after college. And now, um, being a football player, it it has allowed me to cover the Askels game, to actually even be a, a sort of role model to the younger girls. And I, I take pride in that. And I mean, it's all because of maybe it started as an ex- I would also say it started as an excuse for me and my friends to actually just hang out after school. Um, so that's how football started for me. So Your brother, Marco, is a basketball player. Yes. I mean, why didn't you take a basketball? Or why didn't he take a football? That's probably the more appropriate question. What do you think, Jonah? Yeah. Well, I think he started um, in football and then in his younger years moved on to basketball because basketball is pretty much the, the sport that they played here. And for me, it was really just to, I was always jealous that he was part of a team. And when my high school, when Woodrow started a, a football club, it was a good way for me to feel that, you know, to actually be part of a team and for, for my friends and I to hang out after class, meet new new people yeah so Jonah um, for young uh, youth girl soccer players what would you what would you tell them to uh, inspire them to to stay stay on the path that you chose yeah maybe you got an anecdote that you can share with them out there <laughs> um, zoom in know, zoom in it's gonna get sensitive <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would always say, you know, for the young girls to just always have fun. I think that's the most important because if you're having fun, the the skills will follow. Um, when it gets tough, it's that passion that you have for football that will keep you playing the sport. Nice. <laughs> nice. nice. Touch so, me. Touch. <laughs> yeah, well, Tears. we all hope that... Uh, Got my vote. <laughs> we all hope that the Women's uh, Football League will finally prosper. Uh, what's it called again? I'm sorry. I think the plan was a uh, women's super league. Women's super league, wow. Yes. So the Egan UFL, United Football League, the <laughs> super league, you know? yeah, something like that. But yeah. uh, we hope that it does push through. No? Uh, as you said, uh, it, the cool thing about the Philippine sports scene today is you see a lot of sports becoming more mainstream, becoming accepted by the people. Yeah. All of a sudden, you've seen football and then volleyball, even dragon boat racing, become very, very popular here in the Philippines. So. It's what it's really done is show the people, the Filipino people, and even corporations that sports marketing is a viable option for them. Don't you think so, Marielle? Yes, definitely. And I think it's um, now there are even like corporate tournaments. To it's a good way for their employees to have the team building in their company. So Stay I mean, physically fit too. It's yeah. A great way for all these uh, people who work all day to you know get out of the office, enjoy, get a good sweat. While having, we're sharing laughs with a, a coworker or your supervisor. You, you know, it's not your supervisor on the field. I can tell you that. You can say whatever he wants him there. Maybe uh, on that note, I should ask you, Jonah. Um, why did you decide? You know, why did you decide to go to the Philippines and play football? Because did you know that the scene was growing here? Yeah. How did that happen? Then? That's exactly why. Um, so I've been playing, uh, you know, college. Then I went to play in Puerto Rico. I've, I've just been traveling, playing like. Um, basically everywhere from the Caribbean to Asia. Um, I was playing in Guam, and then Nate Berkey, he's a, uh, he's from Virginia, you know, he's a few years older than me. We didn't really know each other that well, but we knew, we played for the same club. We played for Team America growing up. And um, there was a, a guy actually living on Guam who used to coach the national team here. I'm not sure if you know his name. I just know him by Noel. Okay. Noel, he uh, and he has a tie with the Green Archers. 
Um, so we played in the in the Guam Budweiser Men's League, and um, he approached me and he kind of gave me a little bit of information of like what was going on with the Philippines, what was going on with the league, and then a year later, um, I was playing for Cars Plus in Guam. The contract ended. Uh, one of my club coaches from Team America told me about Nate that he was playing here with the Ask Calls and to get in touch with him. So I contacted Nate, who then told me about exactly what was going on with the league, how it was growing, how you know it was a brand new thing, how the China um, developed football in the Philippines, what the Ask Calls had been doing. So it was just like I kept getting more and more information, information. Then I was put in with Ar- uh, in touch with Armando Rosario, who at the time was the manager of, of Kaya. Brought me over for a week, did a trial for a week. What at our time, our coach was Kuto. Um, during that week, you know, I was asked to to uh, to play for Kaya. I went back home. It took me six months to decide if if you know if this was the move that I wanted to make, if I wanted to keep pursuing football, or if I if I wanted to get into the real world, have a nine to five. At the time, I was teaching Spanish at a high school, at all boys uh, private uh, high school, and. Um, then it was just again it was just like it was my passion for the game as you know I was like I'll go there I'll try it I'll help to help the football grow and I'll give it some time see where it goes and before I knew it I woke up one day and now we're the UFL is on TV Tuesday Thursdays uh, everyone had when I first came here people weren't even wearing the same socks in games now everyone's got LGR or Mizuno or everyone's being sponsored teams are being sponsored before I knew there was no foreigners. Then I, next thing I know, guys are coming over from Europe to play in this league. So it was just, it was like it all happened so fast. Um, it literally was like I woke up over the weekend and I was playing on AKTV. <laughs> and as they say, the rest is history. And the rest is history. Well, uh, Fever Pitch, the second episode is coming to an end. We want to thank our guest, Mariel Benitez, who is our idol also. <laughs> right, Jonah? Idol. Yeah, idol. I don't, yeah. Uh, I've been friends with this lady for quite some time, and it's a pleasure knowing her and what she's doing for women's football. She's Mama really Zuno's inspiring. sister. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So um, before we bid our goodbyes, there are a few people we have to thank. We want to thank Beyond the Box, the good people at New Media Factory as well. Uh, Bastier Tadi, Miguel Alfino, you guys are so cool. Thank you for having me and Jonah over here. And uh, we'd also like you to uh, invite all of you to watch all the episodes on the nmfnetwork.tv. Just go there to the website. There are lots of good stuff over there. And um, the cool thing is, if you can't watch it, you can actually download the podcast and listen to it while you're driving, right? On iTunes. iTunes. Speaking of iTunes, Fever Pitch is going to be available on iTunes very, very soon. So check us out there. Um, it's a new show, right, Jonah? We're still improving a lot of I things. I think we did a lot better than last week, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were rolling today. We, yeah, we, we were did rolling a great today. job. Maybe because yeah. we had Mariel speak the whole time. Yeah, that, that, that was the strategy. Like, yeah, I think we did a great job. <laughs> and we still don't have Facebook, and we still don't have Twitter. But you guys can uh, Tonight, tweet we're us. we put it up, I promise. We'll, we'll try, we'll try. <laughs> Got practice. I don't know if I have enough time. But uh, just tweet us, guys. Again, uh, be looking out for my tweets at uh, Jonah Romero 9 I'm always asking for top five. No one's, no one's <laughs> no helping me out here. So uh, please tweet. Tweet about us. Tweet about the show. Tweet us what you guys want to hear, what uh, you want to see, who you want to see. Right. I know me and Rick are good looking, but you're not going to want to see us every week. Right. Marielle, your last thoughts? you want to say any, any greetings? Um, well, first, thanks for having me here and for promoting um, women's football. And I just want to congratulations on this show. And um, I want to ask everyone to keep supporting the Philippine Malditas. We're, we'll be playing in the AFC qualifiers this May in Bangladesh. And we think it is our, we have a big chance and it's our first step to the Women's World Cup for 2015. So you go, there. girl. Yeah, so there you have it. Our second episode of Fever Pitch. Oh, wait a minute. I think Marielle's got the fever. I think you made her sick. <laughs> <laughs> Till next week. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs>